Hello and welcome to the very, 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 very first ever The Hungry Goat Podcast. Just to let you know, obviously, um, I'm not planning on editing these things. Um, it will be... Um, yeah, because as you can tell with my pausing, I've just lost my train of thought altogether. But yeah, it won't be edited. It's meant to be like me sort of having a conversation with you guys. Um, and it could be on something completely random. And it'll be every other week, the main podcast, about 45 to 60 minutes. It'll be posted pretty much everywhere. Um, and you're looking at sort of, you know, obviously it'll be free. You're looking at iTunes, wherever. Um, but yeah, it could be on something completely random, some random topic. It could be political, it could be something in the news, it could be sport, it could be gaming, it could be swimming, which is still sports. And yet again, I've had this one of these brain little moments. But you know what? I'm leaving this in. Um, but yeah, um, it could be anything. I mean, if I get into manicures, it might be manicures. That looks incredibly unlikely at the moment, but there is a possibility. Um, and then, yeah, so that'll be every other week, about 45 to 60 minutes, like I said. But then in the middle, on those other weeks, I would be looking to release a short sort of mini podcast type thing. That'll be just on my YouTube channel. Um, it has a really sort of long um, like web address at the moment because I don't actually have any subscribers. Because this is my first podcast. You can't just buy right, I mean, You can buy them, but I'm not doing that because that's just fucking cheating. Um, swearing might happen. Just a forewarning. If you don't have my voice, bye, I guess. Um, Guest-wise, I could have some of my friends, family, I don't know, um, other podcasters, other people, I don't know. Um, at the moment, it is just me scheduled. Um, when I say scheduled, I haven't really actually planned much out, apart from this one and the next one. So I'm really not looking that far into the future with this at the moment. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously, if anybody has any feedback, just put it, like, get it to me. Uh, there's many different ways you can do that. If Obviously, if you're watching this on YouTube... Um, then cool, that's fine, just leave it in the comments, um, but yeah, with uh, YouTube, you'll most likely just be seeing probably a blank screen, especially on the main podcasts, um, on the mini ones, I might put small images in when they're needed, um, purely because it'll just be on YouTube, so you can see them, but otherwise, pretty much, it's just going to be like a normal sort of podcast, um, yeah, The Hungry Goat is a very random name, but I quite like it, so it will be forever named that. Um, I'm just trying to think what the hell I need to say now. See, I'm, all, I'm already thinking about the small topic that I've kind of put on the end of this one, but I, I feel like there's something else I was meant to be saying to you anyway. Um, yeah, so I just paused that for a split second purely because I was trying to gather my thoughts and rather than just rumble on. Um, but yeah, the sort of idea is I will talk about something and I'll try giving two sort of sides of the explanation, so you'll get both, hopefully, hopefully you'll get a fair view of both sides of the uh, story, and then I will give my own opinion, um, obviously you might not agree with it, you might agree with it, but you might not, um, but obviously that'll change every week, you might agree with me on something to do with, I don't know, football fees, you might disagree with me something on the Prime Minister, I don't know, um, maybe you don't agree with me on a lot of things, but you agree with me a few things, well, that's fantastic. Get in touch with me and tell me what you really think. Because at the end of it, I'm talking to you guys and I'd love to actually hear your side of it at some point. So if you do disagree, or maybe maybe you just disagree. If you, whatever your opinion is, get in touch and I'd love to hear it. And um, obviously if anybody raises a good point, I will put it in in the next podcast. Because why the hell not? I'm not going to be... Um, if I raise a point and then someone else gives me a comment that says... Well, completely like, mugs me off effectively. He just tells me I'm completely wrong then I'll put it in, you know, because I'm not above being told I'm bloody wrong, because, let's be honest, it's going to happen at least once. Um, but yeah, so, that is the sort of thing I'm looking at. I mean, the sort of topics that I'm looking at, I mean, I think the first short one will be on tattoos and, you know, what they are now mean in society and how they are now looked upon. Because obviously you get the very old... I mean, I'm not going to get into it. I'm not going to get into it. I'm not getting into that now. Because that will be on the shorter podcast. Um, but yeah. And then I think you have stuff like football fees. Because, you know, you're seeing it now. You're looking at millions and millions being thrown around. It's absolutely ridiculous. So I think that would be an interesting one to get onto. And then um, other things like gaming as well. Um, you know, how some company or some games, you know, you end up paying like 50, 60 quid. But then... 
ridiculously, that's not even really the price of the game if you think about it, because you end up going into the game and then they release a DLC or something, um, and you're just like, oh, good, that's another ten pounds I have to spend. Oh, look, there's not another ten pounds. But anyway, I'll get into that more and more. Some games do it, some games don't. But some games have different ways of getting money, um, in-game money. So, you know, I, I that one I'm really, really sort of passionate for, and I think that'll be probably my next big one, the gaming one. Um, football fees might come in at a different time, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's pretty much all that I need to cover, wise. But I will just, um, obviously on this podcast, it's not going to be like, what is it, 5.39 or something. Uh, I'm not going to bother just putting that as my full podcast for the first one. That's absolutely ridiculous. Um, but yeah, I mean, the first sort of story I'm going to do, which is very much attached to this one, I mean, it will be a short podcast today because um, this isn't a topic that I know fully about, but I think it's very much in the news right now. And um, I just wanted to say a little something about it. So you're probably looking at this podcast probably only being about half an hour, which I think is fine. Um, but it's a very, very tragic story. The story of um, Charlie Gard. Um, and yeah, some some people might have already tuned off now because they're just like, I don't want to hear more about this. And I understand it's... Um, it's a difficult subject. It's a difficult, difficult sort of situation that they've all been in. The parents, the doctors, everyone. Um, and obviously, there's been a lot of uprising about it because, you know, a hospital is trying is uh, was wanting to turn off the life support of this baby, Charlie Gard, um, and the parents wanted to take the baby to America for sort of a last shot at treatment, really. So it's it really has, got, you know, gotten out and touched a lot of people. I mean, it is it's really really impressive how many people have really shown how much they care. I think that's a really really good thing. Um, but there has also been some negative parts of it as well, which we will get into. But I just want to like to say that um, I will be uh, looking at sort of like the BBC news website, uh, the Guardian, and. The NHS is like own. It's a great Ormond Street sort of hospitals. Their own sort of statement on it as well. Um, I think that might be a good place to actually start. Actually, is going on to the um, Great Ormond Street uh, Hospital website. So I'm I'm on it now, and it's it's the uh, frequently asked questions about Charlie Guard court case. I mean, because obviously they've had it's been a very difficult situation for everyone involved, and it were never gonna really turn out well. I mean, this child had a disease which I cannot remember what it's called because it's really long and complicated. See, I'm I'm gonna have my days. I'm actually gonna try and pronounce this. I am. It. Oh, I cannot pronounce that at all. Mitochondrial DNA depletion syndrome, MDDDS. I'm not sure if I put too many D's in there. I'm not sure. Um. But yeah, I mean, obviously, first off, the f- I mean, before I go into the Great Ormond Street Hospital, sort of what they're saying, um, I would like to just give my full sympathies and support for the family and everyone close to uh, Charlie, Charlie Guard because it's a terrible, terrible, terrible situation. Um, because, you know, at the end of the day, you're like, oh, it's not right, it's not right. But think about them. Um, this is their child, you know. Um... This is a very, very young family who, due to the situation, circumstances, have been extraordinarily unlucky. And I just feel so, so, for lack of a better word, just sad for them. Um, Recently, I I lost a family member, and it was heartbreaking. Um, My parents took it really badly. Um, As you'd expect, you know, any parents losing a child is uh, really difficult and I can't imagine the pain that they're going through really I mean it is um, truly truly something Um, but yeah so my thoughts and prayers are with them but yeah let's get on to the um, Great Ormond Street Hospital for Children they're sort of frequently asked questions Um, I think the first obviously the first one they're saying is who is Charlie Gard and they're just saying he was a Great Ormond Street Hospital patient who's currently who was currently in their intensive care. Um, obviously, if you hadn't heard, Charlie Gard was allowed to pass um, 
because they did they it was too late at the end um so the parents dropped the court case and um allowed for his life support to be turned off and he has now passed and they are this this is being made in the middle of um them sort of planning the funerals obviously it's a very very tough time for them um and like one of the questions here is right is one of the big ones like why is there no treatment available at great Altman street hospital and, they, and they've just written there is no cure for charlie's condition which is terminal gosh explored various treatment options including oh, i cannot speak nu- nucleoside therapy that's not even a difficult word but i'm just borderline literate the experimental treatment that uh, one hospital in the u.s has agreed to offer now that the parents have the funds to cover the cost of this of such treatment um so yeah they don't have that that sort of treatment at gosh um gosh concluded that the experimental treatment which is not designed to be curative would not improve charlie's quality of life i don't know how they came to this conclusion um they haven't said that uh, they haven't really said how um they just said that according to their doctors and their physicians or whoever um it is not going to help his life his quality of life would not improve due to nucleoside therapy uh oh hang on i'm a bit blind the very next question how did gosh come to the decision about his treatment um gosh is gosh gosh is <laughs> uh people had a balance whether this experimental treatment uh, was in the best interest or not one of the factors that influenced the decision was that charlie's brain was shown to be extremely damaged uh at a cellular, at a cellular level um the doctor in the u.s who is offering the treatment agrees that the experimental treatment will not reverse the brain damage that has already occurred so that means that everyone all the doctors involved the ones in the u.s the ones in the uk have said that charlie guard had already had intensive brain damage and that the treatment could like prevent more but it would never correct what has already happened so then and gosh has looked at that and goes well is his quality of life is it worth that risk i mean obviously the point is that a lot of what well, the point is a lot of people are making it it shouldn't be their decision um it should be the parents and i i understand that i do i i truly do understand that but i i will get to that um later but we'll just continue with their sort of statement the entire highly experienced uk team all those who provided second op- second opinions and the consultant blah, 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 consultant <laughs> Uh, instructed by the parents, all agreed that further treatment would be futile, meaning it would be pointless or of no effective benefit. I mean, the problem is, obviously, they're saying this, but then the other side says that's not the case. I mean, it's very much back and forth. Um, but yeah, I mean, then they're like, why is there a court process? And it's because the parents don't agree with the choice that has been made. Um but yeah, so that's obviously why there was a court case. Uh, what is the legal process? They went through many, many court systems. Um, uh, so yeah, the High Court ruled that uh, let turning off the life support was the best interest of Charlie. And then Charlie's parents appealed um, to the Court of Appeals. The Court of Appeals ruled that the High Court decision still stood and that it would be in Charlie's best interest to be allowed to die with dignity. The parents have appealed have applied to appeal to the supreme court the supreme court ruled on the 8th of june 2017 at the court of appeal and the high court decision still stood and that it would be in charlie's best interest to be allowed to die with dignity i mean that's a big thing isn't it like the hospital want the child to die with dignity they don't obviously in an ideal world they wouldn't want that at all but they don't want to just run tests pass on through this little very little baby for something that would effectively give no benefit whatsoever it's 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 very much seen in sort of modern society as quite a degrading thing you know um obviously not all of modern society they're like no you're just trying everything you can but the the baby still feels i believe so he's still going through all of this and he just he's for what this at the point, at this point, from their statement, it is the fact that there isn't much for. I mean, there's just not 
yeah, if they're, if they're not ba- gaining anything, why why put the baby through it? I mean, obviously a lot of people do have a fear of death because there is a big unknown, but I think when life would be that difficult and he would have effectively no quality of life, then it's it just might not be worth it. But obviously it's very hard for parents to see that. And, uh, yeah... Uh, the, one of the things the parents have raised money for the treatment. Why can't it take place? Uh, the High Court and the Court of Appeal have ruled it is not in Charlie's best interest to receive the experimental treatment in the U.S., which means that effectively the government has gone. I know you can do the money yourself, and you don't need us to pay for the child to get over there. But we're still stepping in, saying that this is not the best for the child. Um. But yeah, that that's that's obviously. Um. That's obviously where most of the opinions have been split is about the government stepping in and saying to these parents that no, it's not your opinion that matters, it's ours. We get to choose what happens with your child. And I think a lot of parents have been able to go, oh wow, if that happened to me, I'd be furious. And I think people, a lot of of parents have been able to connect with that and gone, no, what if that happens to me? I can't, no, I have to be able to make my choice. It's my child. Um, like even because obviously, even the government have the best, the child's best interests at heart. But it's still a very painful and difficult thing for parents to get their head round, and for the government to have to deal with. I mean, obviously, the laws are there for reasons; they're to protect the patient. Okay, they're to protect, in this case, Charlie Guard. Um, but those parents just want one more chance. They just want their child. It's it's just like it's like raw emotion, and it's such a difficult situation and time. They just want their little child, and if they say taken into the U.S., they believe as the best thing. Then it's completely understandable that they'll try everything they can to get him there. But then, if you have um, qualified people turning around going, you know, it's in his best interest for him to pass peacefully and with dignity, you, you're then stuck in this hard place where you just go, their parents have all this emotion and they just want their child. But the government's just like, I know it's difficult to see right now, but this is the best thing for him. Um... And I, that that's very difficult. You get two very sort of opinions where one is sort of um, what they believe is ethically correct. And then you have the parents who I think are in sort of like, I'd say almost like a desperate place where, you know, you 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 find out you're pregnant. You go through all these the months of labor. You, you know, you get mentally ready for it. You're then having the child and then all of a sudden... Your child's not being allowed. Like, your child's... Like, you want to do everything to make sure you actually have the child. You're, you're effectively... You're a parent. You've been growing that child. You are that per- that child's parent. And that's all you want is that child. And now it's been taken away by something that you have no control over. And you... It's... It's... I mean, it's, it's terrible, isn't it? It's really... It's, like, emotional. It's... It's heartbreaking. It really is... A really, really shitty situation, to be honest. Um, and Gosh said about the uh, parental rights. They were just like, although Char- uh, Charlie's parents have uh, parental responsibility, override control is by law vested. That's my laptop talking to me about Windows Defender. Fine, whatever. Um, yeah, but anyway, they were saying about the parental rights. Although Charlie's parental parents have parental responsibility. Um, where am I? Parental responsibility, overriding control, is um, is is by the law vested in the court, exercising its independent and objective judgment in the child's best interests. Um, but yeah, I mean that's you have to look at the British Medical Association website for more details on that line. To be honest, because obviously that there is there is tons of laws covering every little part um 
And then they they say that there's obviously there's a lot of confidential stuff going on, so they can't disclose all of that. But that's pretty much their sort of frequently asked questions, their statement that's on their website where they do have whether they can post whatever they want. So it's very much their side of the story. I would take like to have a quick look at the Charlie Guard on um story about the parents and their legal fight on BBC News. I think, you know, BBC News is usually quite good. Um obviously it's not perfect, but it's usually quite good. Um and, you know, they start with just saying that Charlie was born on the 4th of August 2016 with an exceptionally rare genetic disorder. Um, apparently, he appeared perfectly healthy when he was born. His health soon began to deteriorate. And just watching that, I can't imagine the pain and the heartache that the parents went through. So, yet again, I'd love to just say um, my deepest condolences and sympathy is with those parents because having to watch your newborn child health like disintegrate that that's heartbreaking it really is uh apparently um you know great ormond street hospital gosh um said that the moment charlie was diagnosed his prognosis was bleak from the outset so he was really given no chance from the beginning uh charlie then had severe brain damage couldn't open his eyes or move his arms or legs. Uh, he's unable to breathe, unaided. Uh, he was on a ventilator. His heart, liver and kidneys also affected. And apparently the doctors say it is not clear if he feels pain. So that means there is a chance. I think they're saying that there's a chance that he does feel pain. Which means that he's been alive for a year. Um, suffering increase could be suffering from increased levels of pain. Obviously, there is a chance that he didn't feel anything, and that is what I'd truly hope. And I think I'd be sort of ideal. When I say ideal, the best sort of of what well, was a terrible situation. Um, but yeah, he he could have been feeling pain through the whole thing, and that's that is truly truly heartbreaking. Um, but yeah, and then he was like, uh, why did the parents want to go to the US? Um, Charlie's parents, Corin, sorry, not Corin, my bad. Connie Yates and Chris Gard from Bedford, Bedfont in West London uh, wanted Charlie to have an uh, experiment, experimental treatment called nucleoside bypass therapy, NBT. Uh, the treatment is not invasive and can be added to food. Oh, I didn't know that. Seems like an uh, interesting sort of treatment. A hospital in the US agreed to offer Charlie the treatment, and Charlie's parents had raised £1.3 million pounds in funds to take him there. I mean, that £1.3 million, um was pretty much all donations from different well, just random people. Um, and I think that's truly amazing that that many people wanted to help this young, young family in a very difficult time. Um, obviously the treatment was not invasive well, and as you said as I, well, as I said when I was reading it I didn't actually know that um, but he was not is not invasive and could be added to food but if he's feeling pain throughout anyway then you know he's still having to live with that other pain um, but yeah and again he, it, it wasn't clear if he felt pain so if he didn't feel pain he wouldn't have known but Obviously, he couldn't do anything himself at the time. Um, but then BBC wanted to go on to why Gosh ruled out the treatment. Um, no animal or human with Charlie's condition, RR, M2B deficiency, which is the, I suppose, the official sort of way of saying it, has been treated with MBT. But the treatment has been previously offered to patients with similar genetic disorder, TK2 deficiency. Um, but TK2 affects just the muscles, whereas Charlie's condition also affects other organs and his brain. Um, Gosh did not apply, uh, did apply sorry, ethical permission to attempt nucleoside therapy on Charlie. See, they did apply for it. They were just rejected. So really, it is just the government. It's not the uh, hospital at all, really. They, they wanted to try everything. Um, they really did. They wanted to do anything they could to help. Those nurses and doctors have worked extra shifts. Um, they've worked to the best of their abilities. And these are some of the best doctors and nurses in the world. Um, and they've had to do all this while practically being in the limelight as well, which is truly sort of amazing sort of commitment from them. Uh, they've been in this limelight, which they've never wanted. They've never asked for. And they've just, you know, they've kept their mouth shut. They've kept their heads down. They've just kept trying to help any way they could 
And I think that those... I mean, you have to take the silver linings from situations like this. And I think the doctors and nurses are sort of a silver lining. There is, a, like, there isn't many others, to be honest. You really have to look for them at sort of these very bleak, bleak times. Um, by the time that they'd got a response for the ethical permission that they asked for, um, the, the decision was made, um, by the time the decision was made, sorry, um, Charlie's condition had greatly worsened and the view that his brain damage was too severe and irreversible for the treatment to help, which is truly heartbreaking. After contacting other uh, experts in the condition from medical centres across the world, doctors came to the conclusion that Charlie's life support should be switched off. He should be allowed to die with dignity. Which is, I think, the main quote, that, well, the main sort of thing is being said um, for saying that Charlie should be allowed to die is they should be able to die with dignity. What happened in the courts? Um, well, I've already said, you know, Charlie God's parents disagreed with everything, every sort of judgment they tried putting it in. So they went to the High Court, they went to the Appeals, they went to the Supreme Court um, and the European Court and they all came to the same conclusion, which is um, interesting. Um, it does also point out how the campaign became world news. I mean, it really did grip with everyone. Um, very, very emotional sort of story here. And it touched the hearts of, I think, many, many parents. Um... And obviously, a lot of people who aren't parents, obviously as well. I, I'm not saying it's just parents, but I could I can understand fully how a parent could see this story and just think, "What if that was my child?" You know, um, and be and feel a real connection with them, and just feel the true sorrow of the whole thing. Um, but yeah, Donald Trump and the Pope both had sort of mentions in this case. Um, the Pope said that he was following the case with affection and sadness. Um, I really like the Pope, to be honest. I think he's a good Pope, the current one. Um, I won't get into that now, but I think that was a really sort of affectionate way of you know, giving his support. Um, a statement from the Vatican said that the Pope expresses his closeness to um, the parents. From them... For them, he prays, hoping that their desire to accompany and care for their own child to the end is not ignored. I think that's very important, isn't it? Because they, they just want to do the best for Charlie. Everyone just wants to do the best for Charlie until the very end. But it's just, it's just it, was, it was never going to be a good outcome, I think, the whole thing. Um, but yeah. Anyway, Donald Trump was the other one who also got there. He tweeted, um, if we can help little Charlie Guard, as per our friends in the UK and the Pope... We would be delighted to do so. Um, but yeah, obviously that never came to fruition. But it was a uh, it was a good, good, really true and good statement and sentiment from Donald Trump, a guy who I don't always agree with. But I thought that was um, that was I thought that was a pretty classy move from him, and I thought you know a lot of the world appreciated that one. Um, the case returned to the courts purely because. There was just so much disagreement, and because of the public outrage as well. So, um, it even on the BBC News website, the public reaction had been, and they uh, what they were saying about that. Um, they were just saying the he's proved to be very divisive, and it's true. A lot of people have been, you know, they saw it either one way or the other. They thought either the you know, the law's there for a reason. The parents are blinded by it, by their grief, so they can't see what's truly best for the child. And others are like, it shouldn't be up to the government. It should be up to the parents. They should have the right to say what happens to their own child. Um, yeah, and that's like what they're saying. Um, I think what was, what was really appalling um, in the whole situation as well was at one point the hospital said that the staff were receiving death threats. Which... Which is ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Imagine going into, um, let's say, a food store or something, and you just you know you pick up I don't know some bread or something, and let's say it says one pound thirty or something. I don't know. And it used to be one pound or something. If you go up to a random member of staff part time or something and start losing your shit and sending death death notes to them, do you think it's their choice? They had no choice in it, and the nurses and the doctors. They had no choice. They weren't 
the ones making the decision. It was people higher up, you know, they those the experts in the field. You think the nurse that spent extra time, extra shifts, uh, who worked tirelessly, didn't complain, worked for really crappy wages, but was just there to help? Do you think she was the one that was making the decision? No, she was the one who did everything she could. She was the one who was really the silver lining, like I said earlier, the doctors and the nurses were the silver lining, and it's... mm. That, when I saw that they were getting death threats, I felt really sort of quite disgusted with people. They're just doing their jobs, and doctors and nurses often get a hard time. Um, And I think they deserve better. And I think these ones do too. I don't think anyone really deserves to get death threats, especially not a nurse or a doctor who gives up their life to try saving people. But hey. Um... I think it was good that the parents came out and said that they did not condone the abuse and had also um, faced, they had also faced nasty and hurtful remarks, which yet again I think is completely outrageous. Um, these are parents going through something extraordinarily difficult, probably one of the hardest things they're going to have to do in their lives. Um, it doesn't matter if you disagree with them, hurtful and nasty comments do not help. Um, the therapy was actually eventually ruled out by the US doctor he said that um, it was uh, now too late it was uh, Charlie it was too far down um, so Charlie was allowed to pass away uh, very recently in the last few days um, by the time this podcast comes out it will be about a week ago or so that Charlie was allowed to pass um, I mean, the time scale of Charlie's case, I mean, it, originally the first sort of court appeal or first court thing was actually on the 3rd of March 2017, and it went on for, well, it went on from March to July, the end of July, from the beginning of March to the end of July, so that's quite a few months, and the whole time, you know, Charlie Guard is actually kind of in this place of limbo, and it's very, very difficult, isn't it, for everyone involved, um... And obviously, if you go onto the Guardian as well, you know you get a lot of the same sort of, um, sort of questions and answers. I uh, think one that they could ha- they have here is uh, what what is oh, I can't pronounce this word. What is my- mitochondrial disease? Oh my gosh, he pronounced it mitochondrial um, disease. And it's uh, apparently it's the supply of energy to the cells in the human body. Um, the failure leads to cellular injury and cell death. Um, when multiple cells fail, the body's organs are damaged and shut down. These diseases are usually fatal and kill children, although sometimes they don't show up until adulthood. Where they don't kill, they cause serious permanent brain damage, though. So this obviously has this sort of disease has obviously come up as well in other children. They've all been quite fatal. So it was that probably was the reason for the very bleak sort of opening sort of look from the uh, the hospital. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the uh, sort of effective sort of news websites that I'd listen to. But yeah, you get the sort of the contrasting sort of looks of that then, don't you? You get the side of the parents where, um, yeah, where, yeah, I just left that blank. Sorry about that. <laughs> Something just caught my eye out the window. It was a bird just almost like flying into the window. I thought it was gonna. I thought you were gonna hear a loud bang. But anyway, anyway, get, I'll get back to it. I'll get back. To it. Yeah. So it was really is divided onto like two sides. Where you get like um, the side of the parents, where you know they just want to try everything for the child, and then you have the side of law, which is just which is there for the reason that when people have very strong emotions, you need people, other people who know what they're talking about to be able to step in and make the correct decision whether it's ethical or moral the ethical and moral uh, ethical and moral decision correct decision in that circumstance um especially with parents um of a very newborn child they they are they are sort of guided by their emotions very very far very hard sort of raw emotions and it might mean that they have quite clouded thinking. That's why the law is there. It's to protect the best interests of the patient. It's not there to protect the best interests of the parents. And effectively, it's 
it's a cold but practical way of meaning that the patient, the best thing for the patient happens, but it has to kind of ignore the emotional and other sort of, any sort of feelings from anyone around, related to the child or is affected by the situation of um, the patient or child in this case. And obviously this point, this one had very much massive backlash, you know, because of how hard the parents fought. I think in other situations, probably the same thought. I, I'd be surprised if this hadn't happened before. Um, where, you know, very, very hard situation where the doctors said they should be put down. I just think other people were like, yeah, you're the doctors. We'll agree with you. We'll judge you. We'll trust your judgment. And we'll just allow it to happen and we're not going to put up a fight against that. But Charlie Guard's parents put up a fight. And they put up one hell of a fight. They tried everything they could. And I think that will help them a bit. Um, obviously, nothing will get back to the point where, you know, they're going to feel better because their child is not there now. Um, but I think they can at least feel like they tried everything they did, they could. And they did. It was The fight itself was an amazing thing. Um, they were able to get random people, effectively just people in the street, to really f get an emotional bond to Charlie Guard and to really get an emotional bond to the whole situation and really want to push for them, um, which is something very, very difficult and very rare nowadays. They got a whole lot of people to group together for this one cause, um, but unfortunately the law is there for a reason. So obviously you do get the split things. Um, by, like I said earlier, the, the very worst thing that... From an outsider who hasn't really got that invested in the whole situation, the worst thing for me was the death threats or hurtful notes or remor remarks sorry, to either the parents or the um, hospital. Because at the end of the day, everybody just wants the best. For Charlie Guard, anyway. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much both sides of the story. Um, I'll, I'll let you know what I think now. Um, obviously, it's a very sensitive situation. Obviously, a lot of people have different sort of opinions. But when reading into this, um, and this is after obviously I, I've lost someone very close to me recently, anyway, and it is very, very difficult. The emotions, you know, they they are they're very, really, really strong, um, and they make everything very difficult. Um, but yeah. And when I was reading into this, I I can just think, what I can think of is the parents, you know, they have the right motivation. They just want the best for their child. They want to give their child every little chance. But in this sort of a practical situation, that sort of level of raw emotion can cloud someone's judgment. And I'm sure they're not going to look back and go, no, we shouldn't have fought that hard. I'm sure they're going to look back and think, no, we did the right thing, which is good. And I hope that they do. Because otherwise, it could be terrible for themselves. They'd beat themselves up for ages. Um, but I think I agree that Charlie Guard should be allowed, or should have been allowed, to die with dignity. Um, I'm not saying that the parents don't deserve a right to say anything. But obviously, it's very, it's very difficult. I'm not a parent myself, so there is that sort of... Um, I'm not connected like that to the whole situation. Um just for me personally you know these these doctors and these physicians um whatever the the higher people in the law the hospitals everything they've all came to the agreement that you know it wasn't worth it for him his quality of life would not improve but could still get worse with the um the very experimental treatment in the US that has not been done on someone in Charlie's situation before. Um, and they can't rule out the fact that he could feel pain. They they don't know either way. He could have. He might not have. It's so hard to tell. But his quality of life. He was on life support. He was having to obviously have a ventilator. He couldn't breathe on his own. He couldn't move his arms. He couldn't move his legs. His organs were failing. He was getting brain damage. I mean. It was deteriorating. And it was heartbreaking. 
and you just want to help something in that situation and sometimes the best way to help is to unfortunately let go um so i feel like actually it was best for charlie to be allowed to pass um but i fully understand the parents i fully understand the parents and i could see I could see other parents wanting to do that. I can understand why people backed him. I can understand all of that because it's just so heartbreaking to lose anyone, never mind your newborn child. And I just feel so sorry for him. Um, But yeah, I think, you know, obviously four different courts uh, ruled in the favour of letting Charlie pass. Um... And the parents admitted at the end that it was the best for him. Only at the end. They, they said only at the end purely because it was too late. Um, the thing is we will never know. We will never know if it was too late for Charlie. Um, all we know is what has happened now. Um, and we have to move on. We have to learn from all this. We have to move on. And you know. In these terrible situations. At the end of the day. Most of the time. No one wins. Um, but yeah, it's, it's very, very, very sort of sad story, and I just hope, well, I hope to never have to, um, cover anything like this again, because hopefully everybody learns from this, and, you know, if there is sort of an experimental treatment, hopefully it progresses, hopefully the medical field progresses, hopefully, you know, this sort of stuff won't, you know, in the future happen, I mean, we see progression in other diseases. This is just highlighting the fact that actually more research, more studying, more funds need to be put into curing or at least treating. I'm going to give this word one more chance or this uh, disease one more chance to be pronounced. Mito- mitochondrial disease. Not too bad. Uh, mitochondrial disease. It needs to be treated better. Um, people do need to look into it. Obviously, it's not. A massive disease. It doesn't kill millions, but you know, every disease that is fatal does need to be looked into. But yeah, on that very sort of sober message, I promise that actually um uh, most of the other podcasts will be a lot more light hearted. Um it's just that I thought Charlie God, you know, he affected so many lives and as my first podcast I wanted it to be something quite meaningful. So I have just I I, I decided to want to give a message for Charlie God and I just want to say I hope he is resting peacefully now with the angels because that's where he truly deserves to be. But yeah, like I said, my other podcast will be much more um, light-hearted. <laughs> but yeah, thank you, thank you so much for listening, and um, tune in in a week onto my YouTube channel, which will be linked in the descriptions and on my pages and everything. If you do that, you can then get my mini um, podcast every other week. But yeah, in two weeks' time, if you're back, uh, I'm thinking it might be gaming or it might be something to do with sports. I'm not sure. I'm still stuck between the two of them. Um, but yeah, I hope I hope to see you soon. Goodbye.